We're going to have a look at how to administer the database behind Learning Locker. I set up an instance of Learning Locker on AWS using the AMI. It's totally blank. And I've SSH'd into the instance. And I should be able to do my admin from here. Behind the scenes, Learning Locker uses MongoDB, which is a NoSQL document database. You've got a command line interface for that using the command Mongo. So all I've done is SSH'd in, I'm going to run Mongo, and that connects me to my local instance. Because I'm running everything on the same box, which is the default setup for the AMI, uh, this will connect me to localhost. The first thing I can do is type show DBs. This lists out all the databases that Mongo has available. By default, Mongo is always going to have an admin database and a local database. And Learning Locker has added the Learning Locker v2 database. So that's what I want to deal with now. So we're going to type use Learning Locker underscore v2. This is pretty forgiving in that if you type the wrong name, it will let you use that database and it will just create it for you straight away. So you've got to be careful to type the name correctly. Once you're inside there, you've got the familiar concept of tables, which in Mongo are called collections. So collections are like tables, but they're full of documents. This is all the tables that, or collections that Learning Locker uses. Uh, if we have a look in organizations, that should be organizations and users, users should be the only things that have data at the minute. So the command for looking at the data in a table is db.find, sorry, db then collection name, find, and then inside your find, you put the filter for the parameters that you're interested in. If I leave this blank, that's an empty filter, that will return all results. There you go, I get a blob of JSON out in the back. Not very readable, I can tag dot pretty onto the end. Oh, that's a bit easier to understand. I've only got one org at the minute, but if I had multiple and I wanted to specifically find test org, I could put in name and then specify that I'm interested in test org. There you go, I still get the same result back. Let's make a couple of visualizations just as an example. Uh, we'll make this a bar. I'll call it viz1. Learning Locker saves all this automatically. So db dot visualizations dot count should now result in two because I've created two visualizations. This name of is two. Running find with no filter it gives me all the visualizations. Prettifying it shows them both in a readable format. And then, like with the organizations, I can query on anything that I care about. So let's do it on. Well, if we got the name field uh, description. Now let me sit down to one. So on top of that, I can also update documents. You've got to be careful updating things in the DB because you're not going through Learning Locker's application code and you can create invalid data, which will actually break the rest of your app. Learning Locker is going to be fairly resilient to that, but it's not, uh, not something we've tested exhaustively. So the command for modifying a document is update. This takes three options. First is a filter, which says which documents you'd like to update. 
So here we'll limit this to if it's two again. The second is the change that you'd like to apply. You've got to be pretty careful here because by default, if I provide it an empty object, it's going to replace the entire document with that object. If I want to update just a single field, I need to use the dollar set operator. You have dollar set, and dollar set takes another object of the fields you'd like to change. So we'd like to set name to something different. Uh, we're going to set name to this three. And then the last argument, this is optional, is the extra options to the update. The most common one you'll use here is multi. So because the update is so destructive by default, uh, they've got the multi flag, it defaults to false, which means that when you run an update with multi false, you only update a single document, the first document that matches. If you change this to true, it'll update every document that matches the query in the first parameter. Uh, okay, I've made a mistake there because it's not name, it's description. So we get a out the back of this, our write result, which says how many were matched uh, and how many were modified. We matched zero and modified zero. So let's change that to description. We also want to set description, not name. There we go, we matched one, modified one. And there you go, Learn Locker managed to update that because the cache expired and we fetched a new version and it's now viz3. If we wanted to update both of these at the same time, we'd have to provide a filter that matched both. So we could just take out the filter here. Uh, we could set the description to be is four with multi true match to modified to. Now both of these, if we don't want to wait for the cache to expire, we just refresh. Now called viz four. You can also remove documents, which works in a very similar way to update. We want uh, visualizations. You provide a filter which says the visualizations that you'd like to match. And we'll go for description again. Actually, let's use ID. By default in Mongo, every document is given a unique identifier. In this underscore ID field, and this is a special Mongo type called an object ID. So if you're searching for it, you need to remember that it's an object ID and it's not just this string. You have to use object ID, which I'll show you in a second. There's a couple of ways to get that. You can either search for it, so you, we can see that in the DB pretty easily, or you can pull it out of Learning Ocker in a couple of ways. Normally we don't expose the object ID because it's not very important, but some in, for some things it is available. So in the URL for the organization that you're logged into, it's slash organization slash the organization's object ID. And if I refresh this and I've got the network panel open, I can have a look at all my visualizations. And each of these, when I go in, will have an underscore ID field. Yeah. So I'll copy that. And now we'll find that specific visualization. Want to find underscore ID and then we need to wrap it in object ID. And there you go, that gives us back one visualization. 
usually a good idea to do a find before you do a remove. But now if we run remove, right result and removed one, we removed one document. I refresh this, we've only got one visualization. So if there's something that you run up in, run up against in Learning Locker that uh, you can't do through the interface, say you want to delete a bunch of statements, normally that's not allowed by the XAPI, but if you want to, you can do that straight through the DB. There's a bunch of documentation available on the MongoDB website. Head to MongoDB, jump to Docs. It's all in here. So highly recommend digging through that if you want to do anything more advanced.